All right, Alex, go ahead and kick it off. Okay. Hey, audience. See, this doesn't work because they can't respond back, jackass. Now that your plane's, <laughs> now that your plane's blown out of the water, let's do it my way. Hey, Tad. Yeah, Alex. Let me tell you about Japanese pop star sensation Hatsune Miku. I hate myself. Oh, I hate myself. I hate myself. Oh, I hate myself. So, I went to Miku Expo in San Francisco with my friend Ryan. But due to unforeseen circumstances, I wasn't able to stay for the full thing because shit happened. Obviously. Please listen to that episode because it's pretty fucking great. Did we do that already? Yeah, we did. We did the uh, L.A. one. We did it like. Oh, yeah, I did mention I did mention this grandpa having a gun, didn't I? OK, anyway, so that happened. Uh, now, I saw that I looked up at uh, Miku Expo's site to see if he was still playing anywhere else. And to my surprise, actually, were still some tickets available for Chicago. And I'm actually from Illinois, and all my family, my extended family from my mother's side, lives in Chicago. Seen an opportunity and, you know, wanting to exploit it like crazy because I'm an asshole, I immediately texted my grandma and was like, Hey, grandma, can I stay at your house for like a couple days? Now, she texted me back with so many emojis and she was so happy that I genuinely felt bad and said, even if I don't buy these tickets, I'm just going to go visit her because I feel like shit right now. Because I feel like, <laughs> I felt like kind of like an asshole. I feel so, like shit because I told my grandma I wanted to go visit her. No, I, told, I felt like shit because I was using my grandmother to go see Japanese pop star sensation Hatsune Miku and not really caring about my grandma. <laughs> <laughs> you piece of shit. Hey, I, I remember, said I felt wait, bad. Yeah, didn't you, um, you visited my house once, or I went over there, and your grandma wanted to do, like, go out and get steak? And I yeah, had to I tell you, like, go, Alex, go be fucking... a fucking asshole, even Lex She's Luthor, boring. like, go eat steak with his grandma. Because I was, one, younger, and two, she's still boring. She's boring now. <laughs> Whatever, man. Woo! Anyway, I fucking arranged this whole plan with her and this asshole over here. Uh, I buy my stupid Miku tickets, and I'm ready to go on another flight right after getting off another flight. Because, you know, that's not exhausting This or was less than a month. This was, like, two weeks. Three weeks later. In the same month still. <laughs> Miku Expo was in the beginning of the month. Now it's in the fucking end of the month. It was just last month. It was just fucking, like, two weeks ago. Woo. I gotta get my shitty fucking tickets. Spend all my goddamn money. Because I don't Pay make... for my ticket. And his, too. I'm not a fucking... I'm not a fucking jerk. Fucking, uh... So... Get all my shit. Save my vacation time. I go over there. The flight is six goddamn hours long. I play fucking <laughs> Professor Layton versus Phoenix Wright. Which Whatever, I bought care. you on, like, Christmas of last year, and you fucking yeah. refused to play it. Yeah, because it's boring. I'm not in the mood to play a fucking visual novel right now. But you're play- to- Wait, you're not in the mood to play a visual novel. Uh, which four-hour-long story mode did you go through twice? Uh, well, first off, I did that other one two years ago when x first came out, asshole. Second, <laughs> I did it because the new game is coming out, and I just did that yesterday. Fuck you, ass. Hey, the new Phoenix hey, Wright hey, comes wait, wait, wait. out in hold September. Up, hold up, hold up, bam, hold it. I did that story mode the second time yesterday, two weeks after I started playing Layton vs. Trite. Take that, asshole. Ugh. Boom, I'm completely innocent. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you, fucking Godot. Okay, so anyway, <laughs> anyway, fucking go to the stupid thing. I go to my fucking grandma's house. Uh, my grandma is so happy to see me. I meet my fucking step grandpa, who will refer to Gramps because saying step grandpa is a fucking long winded ass term. <laughs> it's like three whole syllables. Yeah, but it's like such a weird thing. Like, who the fuck says step grandpa? Who Techn- has. Huh. What? Actually, technically, my grandpa is a step grandpa as well. I'm pretty sure plenty of people have step grandpas, but like, what do you call a step grandpa? Step grandpa? I just call him grandpa. Yeah, fucking, I just call him Gramps or by his name because you know whatever. So like, we go there, we hang out. I meet their gigantic, fluffy ass dog named Sergeant. He's this fucking Great Pyrenees, I think it's called. He's huge so. and he's really fluffy. It's like a giant. Yeah, Pyrenean. It's like. Four inches thick of fluff. It's insane. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's not nearly as big as his fur makes him look to be. Like, he's got to be, like, a third Pomeranian. that size. Yeah. It's, it, like, it, it, he's, he ac- is. Ac- he's actually two dogs in a trench coat. He's two dogs in a trench coat. Two dogs in a fur coat. Uh, we do that stuff. Nothing super interesting happens that day. 
Second day, we feel like going, because I get there at night, where I just pretty much eat pizza and then go to sleep, so I'm fucking exhausted from all my traveling. And I work a night shift, so, you know, doing all my f- schedule flip-flopping, like right now, for instance, is hard on my body. <laughs> we, we get this asshole to come over, and we go to the goddamn concert. Well, hold well, up. What? Well, we'll talk about Gramps' stories after. Let's get Miku out of the way. Hey, <laughs> Okay. We gotta separate this shit so we don't get distracted. People want Miku. People aren't gonna sit here and listen to me talk about Gramps' fucking crooked cop stories. But hearing that will tease them to listen for later. See, uh, I know what I'm doing here. See, you're good. Co- you're. It's this is good content. This is yeah, what I'm talking about, Alex. I fucking dangle it over their head and say, "Here's some boring shit you don't care about. Here's the good shit later." It's like watching a porn you can't skip, and you have to look at all the boring plot points that you don't really care about, because, you know, I don't give a shit about why that lemon-stealing whore is stealing those lemons. I just care about <laughs> the middle part. <laughs> what? Oh, you've never seen lemon-stealing whores? Well, we'll not to distract this podcast like I just said, <laughs> we'll get to that video at the end of this. Lemon-stealing whores? Yeah. Okay. Speaking of lemon-stealing whores, Hatsune Miku. Yeah, that's not even funny. Fuck you. You didn't even try for that, you fucking <laughs> so piece of I, shit. So I arrive, you know, I go up there at like, I get there at like 5.30. I think it was just you there. Uh-huh. I don't think your grandparents were there. I didn't even see your grandma until we got pizza, like on the last day. Because she was busy. She works at a fucking barber shop. Okay, they, every time I say she's a barber, they say, Alex, she's a hairstylist. I'm like, yeah, a barber, whatever. <laughs> He cuts my hair for free, so fuck you. She's a barber in my heart. We get there for like an hour. We we hang out for a little bit. I change. I, I don't remember if I... Yeah, I changed into my Homestuck shirt. I'm glad you put that in the story. I'm glad to see, they hear you change clothes. No, this is important because I changed into a Homestuck shirt. And I acquired my Hatsune Miku hat. Yes, I also had a hat. I had a Make America Great Again hat that I paid $35 for. Except I took out, there was a label maker at work, and I printed out the word anime and fucking slapped that right on there. And I had a backup as well. I had two. I have two. Well, I have a big baseball cap with the words Miku on it, and then her twin fucking hair coming out the side. They look like crab claws, according to some homeless guy. But we'll get to him <laughs> later. We go on this, should, should we just get to the magical adventure of Chicago? Yeah, that's where we're going to right now. On the way up there, because I live about an hour and 20 minutes away, it was mm-hmm. relatively normal. As I got closer to Chicago, it just started fucking downpouring. Like, I couldn't see the road. And then it oh, cleared no. up. And I'm like, okay, sweet. All right, good. Then we get there. It's like 5.30. It's raining really bad. Clears up again. And we're like, okay, sweet. We're going to be able to get there just fine. So we get on. We get uh, into my car because Alex doesn't have a driver's license because he's a fucking baby. I bike, motherfucker. I'm exercising. <laughs> uh. We start driving out there, we go on, like, the highway, we go out there, and it starts raining really, really, really hard again. Like, Real fucking, bad. It's fucking, fucking wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, instantly. It's like, a, it's like a hurricane, except not near the ocean, and not as shitty. Like, it's just fucking pounding. Like, my wipers are also shit, so that didn't help much. And the, uh, the Alex, Alex I didn't tell you this, but, like, my wipers, if I put them on max, there's a chance that they can get bungled up and hit each other. Goody. Because the fucking Buick... If you're listening to this, you can fuck right off. Uh, the way that they have oh, I'm wipers... I'm sure they're listening. Like, there's like a little like metal stub that the wipers hook onto. And the stub itself... On every other fucking thing on the planet, it's the wipers that have the stub. So they have the grip. So they go left and right, left and right. But on you know a Buick, it's the metal nub. And if that gets worn down, you're fucked. You have to take apart the entire front of the car which is several hundred dollars just for a fucking wiper blade. So, like, there was a chance the entire time you were driving there that every single time it went up and down, they were going to collide, and then we wouldn't be able to use them. And we would have to fucking stop, and I would have to, like, open the front of my car and try to fix these fucking things and probably fail at it. The thing that didn't fucking happen, that would have been hilarious and awful and pissed me off. Because <laughs> we would have never even... We would have we never even seen Miku. Yeah. But... Uh, so, because we're fucking stupid, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna, oh, you know, GPS on my phone, boop, 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 uh, we're gonna Chicago drive Theater. Into, we're gonna drive into the middle of Chicago. At 5.30 p.m. I don't know if you know this, but, uh, most people get out of work at about 5, and you're in downtown Chicago, and it's raining so hard you can't see five feet in front of you, 
We're, we're not joking. It was raining really, really bad. I feel bad for anyone who was waiting outside in line for a Japanese pop star sensation, Hatsune Miku. Yeah, fuck them. They didn't... They fuck were, like, them. Yeah, fuck them. They were safe, Alex. You can they see the wet, people... But they were you, safe. You can see the people who got rides who were privileged because they were dry, and you can see the people who suffered who were wet. <laughs> As it wet fags be. versus dry fags. <laughs> So we're driving through downtown Chicago. We, I put it in my fucking GPS, Chicago Drive Theater. It's a very nice way to put that. Like, just a total fucking dumbass I put in Chicago Theater. Everybody realized, like, wow, this is really, really, really bad traffic. They're talking everywhere. I look like a disoriented Mr. Krabs, which is something that's going to come up many times in this episode. Uh. <laughs> uh, eventually, like, two blocks away, I'm like, wait a second. Alex, we have to park somewhere. Where the fuck do we park? And we're like, oh, no. And so I give him my phone, and he fucking stumbles with it like a dumbass for like five minutes. I don't minutes. use it. I don't know, man. It's fucking magic. All I do is play video games. I'm not an expert. I'm not a, I'm not a, a hacker from NCIS. <laughs> so I had to take my phone in the middle of Chicago, like a stoplight, and I'd like put it in, like I had to find nearby, uh, nearby parking garages. I go down a one-way street, just the entire thing, before I realize it. I'm like, oh, fuck shit. Uh... <laughs> Okay, just gonna take just gonna take it right here. Apparently, uh, the GPS was not lying when it said I couldn't take that turn. <sighs> that happened twice. The, the second time, fucking, I like pulled in. I'm like, oh, oops, oh shit, and I had to like back out. I'm glad like, there are no cops in Chicago whatsoever, by the way, because we got away with some shit, and a lot of people also got away with some shit. I've never seen so many people break the law in such a short time span. Yeah, people were just crossing through reds. Well, borderline bumping each other, bumping into each other. Do you it was remember awful. that dude? We were at the stoplight. It was like right before we found the twenty-seven dollar parking space. It was like mm-hmm. one turn before 25, that. Twenty-five. We were stopped at the stoplight for like I don't know fifteen minutes because I literally couldn't turn. And that dude mm-hmm. went up on the fucking sidewalk to go around me, <laughs> pass a red light, and then just go take an illegal turn into the lane. Yeah, dude. Some fucked up shit. It took us, what was it, 40 minutes to get to the parking space? It took more it took, than that. It took like 58 minutes. It took, you know, a long-ass time. After we parked, it took us 10 minutes to walk from the parking space to the Chicago Theater. Walk slash sprint. Because remember, this entire time, it's fucking hammering rain. It's literally torrential. Our, our, our bodies felt like if you jumped into a lake and then got out and walked. That's how bad it was. It was it really was... bad. See, I have these shoes... That are like sporty shoes that have kind of like I don't want to say holes, but like you know what I porous. mean. I'm like they, they're porous. Yeah, they have those things on them. So whenever I step in a puddle, my entire foot gets immediately soaked. It's really fun and not really fun at all. <laughs> so going through this rainy ass fucking Chicago, fucking yelling at cars to stop and let me walk when it says I'm allowed to walk, you fucking cuck. Because uh, <laughs> I did that. If you didn't hear me, I yelled at some other fucker. <laughs> I don't remember because- that. I fucking just, it just held my hand and fucking yelled at him because it's my goddamn, I said literally like, it's my goddamn turn, wait, asshole. <laughs> it's my, mom said it's my turn. No, because I'm fucking pissed right goddamn now. Follow the fucking <laughs> rules, that's what they're for. So I don't get hit by cars. We sprint through the rain. I'm carrying my Miku hat in a bag to keep it dry. My hat just got it. soaked. Thank God the anime sticker stayed on. Yeah, that was thank the thing I was God. So we finally get there, all huddled up with other people. I pull out my soaking wet tickets. They work, thank God. And we get in, <laughs> soaked as shit. I don't take any pictures of all these fucking Mikus running around because I'm soaked and pissed. It takes <laughs> us it takes us 20 minutes to find a goddamn men's bathroom. There's like 80 women's yeah. bathrooms all over the place. It was only women's rooms. Fucking white privilege my ass. <laughs> we went around the entire building twice. What? Both yeah. floors, because I didn't want to ask them. No, I asked them where it was after no, we 10 asked, minutes. Like, three separate guards, asshole. We didn't want to ask the same guard twice and sound like idiots. <laughs> I know, that's what I mean. We had to, I didn't know what this person was talking about. I'm going to find a different guard and ask them. <laughs> so we get into the stupid bathroom, take our hashtag soaked selfies with my stupid Miku hat. And Which we I'll, finally, post, I'll post in the description. I'll post the fucking selfies. people want to see us. So <laughs> we finally get this all over with. And we get into our stupid seats, soggy as shit. My butt was soggy all fucking through. <laughs> I didn't like it. My wallet got fucking soaked. Thank God I keep my wallet in my front pocket, not my back pocket like a savage. Well, if you keep it in your back pocket, how are they supposed to steal it? They have to touch your butt. 
Okay, how am I supposed to sit from my front? They touch my dick. You got me there. Boom, motherfucker! You got me, trite. Anyway, so we sit down. We're finally done. We talked to some people, tell them it's three hours, because I knew this time it was three hours. Yeah, mm-hmm. you ain't chewing me out of this one. <laughs> Not this time, Miku. It was Not more than time, three hours. Yeah, because they had that, that encore thing, which we'll get to. So fucking... <laughs> Fucking, not this time, Anamana Gucci. You're not taking those 30 minutes from me and running. <laughs> so we sit down. Anamana Gucci gets on. They start playing their shit. We, and then everyone stands up so I can't see. And I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I know. I, I had the same reaction. I'm like, the first song, I'm like, so Anamana Gucci does their thing. I think they stand up at the very end and start clapping. I'm like, I'm just going to sit down because my feet are liter- my feet are wet. I'm gonna have fucking grape. I'm gonna have grape toes, which is the You're worst have thing. Foot at the end of this shit. And so I'm just sitting there, I'm just like whatever, playing with my fucking Hatsune Miku. I'm sorry, Japanese pop star sensation Hatsune Miku, uh, officially licensed glow stick they gave us. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and me and Alex fucking count down and snapped it like a fucking dog's spine. A dog's spine. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> after all this shit's over. Miku finally shows up, and I give Ted these little earplugs that I bought. Now, I didn't use those last time, and half the reason I wanted to go was just to get some fucking validation out of these $40 earplugs. They were $40? Well, because it's $20 for each. And did you, didn't you fucking put them in wrong? No, I put them in right. I don't know, because like, I just took them in, I like screwed them in, I read the fucking description. Oh, yeah, yeah. First, I just and then I just, I just took them out after ten minutes, because it wasn't even loud. Because we're at, we were in the center, and in fucking in San Francisco, we were in the center, so the sound was coming right at us, you know, sound wave physics. It's coming right shit. for us. And since I've been to Chimiku Express, I could say, it was definitely louder. It was actually harder to hear her voice over the music in San Francisco, because of that sound physics bullshit. <laughs> anyway, so I'm actually happy we got a little off to the side. And I had a much better angle than I was expecting. Yeah. Anyway... Miku shows up, the crowd erupts. They the lose fucking... their goddamn minds. They lose their shit. And, like, I, t- I turned to Teddy Fight and hear me, I said, that's what the earplugs were for. Was it for Miku at all? Fucking, this goddamn one girl who was behind us was fucking psyched as shit to see Miku. Like, <laughs> fuck, dude, she changed her name so goddamn much. Speaking of that bitch. So Hold on, we'll I- get to that, we'll get to that. <gasps> what the fuck else am I going to get to? The song? So she hops up the there, she hops up there, and she says in English... No, 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 no Ted, she did three songs before she did that. Oh, Remember, that's right. Yeah, asshole, so as I was saying in the correct chronology here, <laughs> she does her song, and in the slight, <laughs> she does the first fucking song, and at, what was it, World Is Mine? I think it was World Is Mine. Fuck you! So, she does the song, <laughs> and like... After that's over, I get a tap on my shoulder, I turn around, and some guy's like, hey, this lady wants to talk to you. I'm like, okay. She's like, I'm sorry, sir, but I can't see. You're too tall, I can't see past your gigantic Miku hat. Uh, can you take it off? I'm like, oh, yeah, sure, all right, cool, that's all right. I take it off, I immediately turn to Ted. I'm so fucking pissed I had to take it off my hat right now. <laughs> I spent $40 on this fucking hat, Ted. I tried to take it and wear it over mine, but he wouldn't let me. Yeah, I don't want you fucking disrespecting, <laughs> dishonoring my Miku hat, my oh. crab claw hat. I just, every, like, other song, I just turn to Ted and say, I'm so fucking livid, I can't wear my hat right now. This, there's this one guy I saw to the right was filming the crowd, and he saw me, and I'm like, oh, shit, I better put my hat on. But by the time I put it on, it was too late. I could have been I could have been in that with my hat already on if that fucking bitch behind me didn't fucking ruin my day. Oh, that dude? I found that dude's video on YouTube. And I could have been in it with my Miku hat. I found it because I Googled, uh... I googled, like, the thing to try to find, like, the th- there were about three songs in there that I'm like, hey, this is pretty good. It's okay. And then, like, 93 other songs where I'm like, okay. Oof. Oh, sh- all right. Uh, it ranged from, all right, uh, okay, whatever, to, oh, God, that actually hurts my ears. It actually hurts my ears. How could you be so rude? There was one where, she, like, she just got really, really, really high-pitched. Her voice cracked. And then it got even higher pitched. I'm like, this fucking hurts. So I actually put the earphones in for that one. So anyway, after the third song, which is a song that I really like, Two-Faced Lovers, fucking Miku gets on the stage to say something. And when Miku talks, everyone on fucking Earth silences. I thought that was creepy as shit. I was, because I already saw it before, so I knew it was coming. And I knew the crowd would react the same way. 
So I twisted my earplugs a little bit more just in case. <laughs> but Miku shows up on stage and she says, hello, Chicago. She didn't say hello. She did not say hello. She said, hello, Chicago. <laughs> well, you it know what, Ted? She's the trying. Funniest fucking thing. See, but in, the, in San Francisco, Ryan had the reaction of, oh, my God. I had the same that. one, but it was yeah. after that because he saw me almost collapse on the floor like, Jesus Christ, this is going to be three hours. And, I'm just, and I got the feeling of embarrassing one of my best friends twice in my life. I brought two people who hate Hatsune Miku to a Hatsune Miku concert. The, and got I wanted to, to fucking that. punch you in the jaw in your smug-ass face. My smug-ass DreamWorks face. I was so happy. <laughs> I was so happy. I'll never it, have a moment like that again. It was the DreamWorks face. It really was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, fucking... The concert goes. Everything is pretty great. People wave their glow sticks. Fucking bitch in the back keeps chanting for Miku. I'm still mad at her. We never sat down in this entire... Uh... Nope, we stood for the entire thing soaked as fuck. If you sat, you couldn't see anything. You would just see yeah, a bunch of fucking Rico. nerd backs. Nerd backs. My phone died like 10 minutes in too, so I couldn't get any pictures. And Alex would it fucking pictures. give me his phone to take okay. pictures and do, you know, do it for the fucking Vine. I wanted to take a selfie with Miku, but he wouldn't fucking see, let that's... me. Why I didn't want you to? I had to do it for the vine, Alex. No, Dad, you're not doing that. Anywho! <laughs> oh, also, the song where she got high pitch was last night, Good Night, no doubt. Yeah, well, it was fucking terrible. It was probably okay. that one, and then, like, the ocean one, with a bunch of bubbles, and the Black Angel one were probably the shittiest. The ones I liked were, uh... You liked Secret Police? There was, sec- I think, Secret Police, I guess, where she was, like, pointing guns at the crowd. She was yes, going that was full Secret Col- Police. She was trying to go full Columbine. Yes, she was bringing up the guns of the No, she was going full Sandy Hook, because it wasn't real. It was all fake, Alex. Yes, uh, Secret Police. <laughs> fucking take, fucking wake up, sheeple. Secret Any... Police, remote control, and then, uh, there was one with the pink one. The pink girl, I don't Luca. know. Luca. Yeah. And and that's yeah, the character from Monster yeah. Girl Quest, Alex. Oh, there's the playlist. So it was, uh, I just, oh, fucking, uh, intense singing of Hatsune Miku. What the fuck? That was the one where she turns into an angel and she talks super fast. Oh, that one was shit. I like that one. Fuck you. Yeah, you would like game. it. You would like it. Ugh. The disappearance of Hatsune Miku. They lied. That was the second song. That was the second song. There were 25 after it. They lied Deep to me. Deep Sea Girl, that was it. That, that song is in Project Mirai. Snowman was okay. It was oh, okay. I like Snowman. It's one of Kaido's like, best songs. It's one of the ones where he doesn't sound like garbage in it. <laughs> Kaido um, has it hard. The next one that stood up to me from there was uh, when like the little yellow kid appeared on, sc- on the screen. And Which the girl one? behind Hinterland. us, the, the boy, and the girl behind us fucking lost it she was shrieking every single time he split into five i'm gonna feel boys. bad if like that girl who told me to take my head off wasn't that girl but at the same time i'm not feeling bad because i think it's really funny it was it probably uh, was probably was but she, she made us unhappy fucking mind whenever he showed up on there she's two rows behind us too not one so that's how loud she was <laughs> so she had to tap a different guy to talk to me but she was two rows behind. How could you not see over your fucking hat? Because I'm six foot three. <laughs> I'm a giant. The entire time, Miku was staring at me directly in the eyes because of how the fucking screen worked. And it was so unnerving. She was looking right at me, Alex. The I'm entire sure. time. She I'm never sure. looked away. It's a damn shame you can't see up her skirt at that angle. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a shame. All right, Alex. I, I had to put that joke in there somewhere. Oh, by the way, people had people had glow sticks that changed color that you could switch around for like the yep. respective colors for the characters. Yeah. So the hurt. concert goes on for three hours of us standing there. We have fun. I keep looking at Ted laughing every way. I was trying to do like some of the dance motions with my hands, but every time I did, he never fucking looked. It pissed me off. Oh, I was trying. No, so I noticed, hard. Alex. I noticed. Damn. Good. And what I did in response was I started bobbing my knees and doing the reload animations from various video games. I call this one the road hog. I slap my head, reach over, slap something on top, and cock it back up. It's the road hog, baby. Uh, I did the Devil Man's uh, sticky bomb launcher. It's pretty great, Alex. 
I saw you saw the flare gun where I fucking poop. It's very similar to the Roadhog. Very similar to the Roadhog. It is the Roadhog. <laughs> There's slight differences. There's slight differences. You you twist your hand in a slightly different way. Exactly. You see, you know, it's the it's the small stuff. Okay, but, so anyway, we were Miku's at all of this. We gotta speed this up. We gotta get to fucking yeah. Gramps. Yeah, we so, are right, so that's so three we, hours. We do the concert. We f- we finally are done. I decide not to buy any shirts because the line's super long. I get to see all the little Matryoshkas that I like. Matryoshka's a song that I really like. There's a lot of cosplayers wearing the fucking designs from the song. I really like that. So the cosplayers, I don't have to take pictures. I'm tired. I'm soaked. And I want to go home. On the I'm way just... out, there was a bunch of like street musicians and shit playing like a saxophone and playing the uh, drums and shit. Just fucking yeah, so... walked right past them. Fuck them. <laughs> As we were walking past, we saw Trump Tower. We saw Trump Tower. We took a picture by Trump Tower. A uh, uh, black homeless guy said, like, hey, man, you got, like, arms coming out of your hat, man. Because the fucking Miku hat looks like little crab claws. Thanks <laughs> for pointing that out to me. So, like, I was like, yeah, dude, whatever, dude. Before I forget, the anime fell off my hat once. No idea where it went. I put us. I was like, Alex, don't worry, I got this. Reached into my wallet, pulled out a second one, and applied it. And then, as we were leaving, it fell off again. It stuck right on the ass of the girl in front of us. Who was a different girl? Who was not the bitch who took me to make, take my hat off? Yeah. So, who, so sorry for her <laughs> when she discovered she had anime stuck to her butt. <laughs> so anyway, we get back to the fucking thing. We go home. Fucking much, everyone's much gone. Much easier to drive home. That's for goddamn sure. Because everyone was gone. Let me tell you about my step grandpa, who we refer to as Gramps. So he's an old ass man who's orb shaped and fat, like Danny DeVito. <laughs> orb shaped. He's just a ball, Tad. You saw him. <laughs> he's like Eggman uh, or Danny DeVito. He has he's a old, master plan. He's crude. He's got a, a chair he leans back and sleeps on, with like a recliner chair, watches sports all day, and that's pretty much all he does. He's a rude, crude dude with a tune to match the mood. And a long time ago, in the late 60s, early 70s, he was a cop in Chicago. He was a crooked-ass cop, apparently. <laughs> he has gone on many little adventures, such as... Pranking his, pranking the, his boss, the commissioner, with a bunch of his buddies. He had, uh, uh, should I get right into the, the really bad stuff or the, or the light stuff first? We'll start off with the peppering of the light stuff, like the, the, the cow skull. Yeah, so in order to prank their boss, they go to a meat like factory place where they kill cows, and they get a cow skull, but it's a fresh cow skull, so it has meat stuck to it, so it's basically just like gore. So it's like something straight out of a fucking weird fucking Silent Hill thing. So they fucking, they, they take it, put it on the hood of his car, and the fucking police guy comes in, because they worked midnights at the time. So he comes in at 6 in the morning, and he's like, who the fuck did this? I know one of you goddamn assholes did this, and I'm gonna find out who. And he's just pissed. And fucking Gramps is just laughing his fucking ass off during the whole thing. He got away with it. <laughs> he got away with a lot of things he shouldn't have. Speaking of things he shouldn't have gotten away with... Once upon a time, he was doing another night shift thing with his partner. They were driving, doing patrols, and they would take, like, one hour nap and then have the other guy drive and take turns and do that. So, while it was Gramps' turn to drive, he actually dozed off on the wheel while still going 35 miles an hour. And while he was asleep, <laughs> hit a fire hydrant or whatever, and the wire just spewed up. The entire front uh, part of the police car was damaged. Like in a movie. And- yeah, and he wakes up like, oh, God, oh, shit, what did I do? He wakes up, his partner wakes up, he's like, oh, God, what happened? What do we do? What do we do? We're so screwed. This car's like $10,000. Oh, we're so fired. What do we do? Like, and his partner says, we put in a chase. So they call up the fucking, like, headquarters or whatever the cops do, and they're like, we got officers down, officers down. We got, we were trying to chase after some guy. We need hack up over here. And so the call comes out, and they start calling in a bunch of other cars, and they all start swarming by. <laughs> Gramps and his partner pretend to act like they're all injured and worn out. <laughs> and they never caught the criminal, but, Gra- but Gramps got away with it. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> in the olden days because this is what happened this fast sucks people remember this uh, is like the 60s and 70s so this is around the time of like the black power movement and all that i think yeah. i'm going to google that right now so I'm, i don't look fucking stupid 
fact check yourself before you shrek yourself. Uh, early 1960s, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm still in there. Well, he was 70s, so it's a little late, but it's still like right after, so there's still tensions, of course. So shit's not perfect. We're really getting into this black people talk because near a, what was it, black high school, there was a huge rally going on. About 2000 N words, as he referred to them, because you can't say the full word anymore, it's 2016. <laughs> John we're, Oliver. We're all gathering around doing stuff. So, you know, being the white people we are, we immediately got scared and made the cops come by to monitor them. Shit was getting out of hand. The fucking black people were going a little nuts. They, were, they started smashing the cop cars. Gramps and his partner are stuck in the middle of 2,000 black people are starting a riot, smashing their uh, windows in with bricks. They're freaking out. So Gramps, being the fucking badass he used to be before he became an orb... <laughs> fucking gets out, pushes people away, and sees what he is uh, deemed the ringleader, ringleader, a fat black lady who's kind of like yelling at everybody to do stuff. So he fucking <laughs> guns her down, and I mean, I mean, runs at her and fucking just pulls his gun. Yeah, I was about to say, holy shit, Alex, I don't remember that. Sorry, 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 sorry. Run, <laughs> runs, her, runs her down. Sorry, it's not 2016. They didn't shoot black people on sight yet. They tackled him <laughs> on sight. Please, sorry, we gotta get with the times here. Uh, so he tackles her, arrests her, and he's like, all right, I got her. But he realized he went out too far into the swarm of of, of the, the, the black people see, and he's surrounded by black people. So he's scared because, you know, he's white, and it's the 70s, <laughs> it's the late 60s, early 70s, you know, racism. So he takes out his old-ass radio, which, you know, is basically... Bigger than this PS4 I have sitting here. It's a, it's a huge brick. ass thing. And a leather, yeah, it's a huge brick, uh, in a big leather thing. He compared it to a blackjack. So he takes it by the antenna, starts swinging it around like a fucking mace, and starts hitting <laughs> all the dang people around him and knocking them out, trying to just get back to his car. Eventually, reinforcements show up and everything gets put into order. But that's, and, and they got people arrested. And there they go, and he survived. And that's the story of how he beat a bunch of black people with a b- makeshift blackjack. And remember, his his violent outbursts weren't just limited to black people. No, no, he had some other violent outbursts that he got in trouble for. Because don't worry, he didn't get away with it scot-free all the time. It's not that good of stories. Only let's, most of the time. Let's talk about the really good one, the McMilty Brothers. Allegedly famous arsonist from what was it, Scotland or Ireland or something, right? Scotland. Scotland, yeah. They're, they're, yeah, they were Scottish, Scottish. Scottish immigrants arsonists. They were so bad, as he said, they lived in an all black neighborhood, but were so and they were white, but they were so bad the black people wouldn't even mess with them. I can see my grandpa was kind of racist, by the way. <laughs> anyway, all, all grandpas are. All grandpas are racist. All grandparents are. They're from older times. Hashtag not like all grandparents. They're loving. They're just old. Be, be nice to your grandparents, kids. The McMilty brothers are these two really big-ass, angry, evil dudes who blow stuff up and burn buildings down because they're just evil. And they're so big and scary that people are afraid to take them down. Example, other cops are afraid to arrest them because if they fail, the McMilty brothers would get away and then get them back. <laughs> That's what they do. They would fucking blow up their house or something. They would like basically set it on fire, yeah. So, like, okay, Gramps and his squad, because he could get a whole, like, fucking little, little, little platoon, a little, little army force going here. Because this was, I think this was before the time SWAT, like, existed, right? Yeah, because SWAT came around, around like, this time. Was it, like, the 80s, I think? SWAT's relatively new, actually. I think it's the late surprising. 70s. I think it came around when they had, with the, um, Black Panther building. I might, get, I might be getting my uh, facts messed up here, but they fu- the, the, the SWAT teams are pretty fucking garbo, too. Mm-hmm. They okay. just shot a house until it, like, fell apart. Yeah, dude. Hey, man, SWAT teams were formed in fear of black people. Did you know that's why they stopped putting cocaine in Coca-Cola, was fear that black people would get coked up and rape white women? I mean, it didn't happen because they got rid of it, so, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm not glad, saying, I'm not saying I'm it's glad. true. 
I'm not I saying it's true. It. I'm just I saying it, Alex. History. I hate history so much. We are so awful. We are bad people. We're the dollop, Tad. <laughs> we it, are the dollop. So to the McMelty brothers, I'm distracting myself here. Greg and his platoon get the McMelty brothers. They find them causing a ruckus in a neighborhood. They're throwing tr- uh, big metal trash bin lids like Frisbees and wrecking cars and stuff. <laughs> so, because, you know, they're just, they, they, they are Mad Max villains. <laughs> they are. <laughs> So, so a big fight breaks out. Freaking, the the cops are losing because these are big ass dudes. They're huge, bigger than me. They're like six four, six five. They're titans. They're taking <laughs> down the cops like left and right. Eventually, by sheer numbers alone, they wear the McMulty brothers down and finally get them arrested and put in the fucking custody, put them in the back of the car. But Gramps wasn't having that. He was so mad about getting his ass kicked when he went to the back of that truck where they, the back of the big cop truck thing they put him in, right? Mm-hmm. He took out his nightstick, oh no, his, his baton, sorry, I gotta use the right word, and beat the living shit out of them when they were in handcuffs. Which, by the way, is grossly illegal. Oh yeah. He beat the hell out of them so bad that in their mug shots, one of them was holding their teeth that fell out after getting beat so bad by Gramps. Gramps was a crooked ass cop. Uh, and he actually got under some investigations about his aggressive attitude for situations like this. You know, good things for my grandpa. <laughs> Woo! But yeah, my gramps did stuff like that. He was a fucking badass, a crooked ass badass, but he was a darn good cop. <laughs> you're a loose cannon, gramps, but you're a damn good cop. <laughs> Took down those McMilty brothers. Didn't like your style, but you got it done. <laughs> now, who put this cow skull in my car? And which one of you motherfuckers did this? <laughs> so, after we hung out with Gramps, and I realized that 20 years later, I really should have hung out with my grandpa more. <laughs> Learned how cool he was. We went to go see Captain America Civil War in the mall, which had the nicest movie theater I've ever been in. I know, right? They had hey. let me let me give you a rundown on all the sweet shit they had. Number one, they had fucking vitamin water in the fountain machine. Number <laughs> two, they took Fandango, which is grandma gave me a twenty five dollar Fandango card. Wait, 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 I found out that was actually a gift my aunt Sherry gave my grandma on Christmas, but grandma never used it. So happy <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> grandma said wow thanks for telling me that alex not getting grandma anything this christmas <laughs> anyway so we go see we go to there they've got they got fucking reclining seats that are like padded like big sofa chairs they're, they're fucking so leather recliners that you can just fucking swoosh back and swoosh forth they were in. so comfortable i took off my shoes and leaned back and just kind of watched the movie i was so <laughs> relaxed eating my gummies Oh, <laughs> that's right. You had your lifesavers gummies. Yeah, dude, those are fucking good. They make my stomach feel good. <laughs> and uh, the best part of the movie was you didn't know that Spider-Man was going to appear in it. I-, I remember seeing him in a trailer, but it completely skipped my mind that he was going to be in the movie. So I got to see someone for the first time. Legit, like, wait, you, s- you said fucking Peter. J- J- is oh, is oh, Spider-Man oh, actually oh, going to be in this fucking movie? Oh, Holy shit. Oh. I really, really liked that movie because it gave every hero, like, an equal amount of screen time and shit. Like, even on the second, because this, this was the second time I saw it, just enough time for each thing, and it was just under three hours. So it feels like a long time the first time you see it, but it's, like, the perfect length. It's probably my favorite Marvel movie so far. My favorite characters in the movie were easily uh, the Vision in his casual outfit, which I fucking, <laughs> I love the idea of this superhuman robot wearing that. And then and he's wearing Winter... it over his cape and shit. Yeah. And uh, I also like the Winter Soldier. He was super cool. Bucky. But yeah. And then uh, that was that was our trip to Chicago. It was pretty great. It yeah. It was a lot of fun. We went to the Science Industry Museum as well. Nothing to do with happened there. Yeah. Someone threw a quarter into the earthquake machine. But that was about... Yeah, a little shit like that. Nothing to do with just, just a lot of learning and fun stuff. Like learning. Yeah. We had to just... walk. We walked around the entire thing. With our fucking wet feet, so it was like it was it was hell. It was hell on earth because my feet were so fucking sore. And I wanted to look at the the castle, but Alex is like, no, I don't want to look at these tiny fairies. They're gay. They're so. gay. 
No, it was actually because it, no, it was actually cause super fucking hot in there. I was so sweaty in my fucking sweater, Tad. It was an enclosed space. Weren't you wearing your sweater over an anime shirt? Or was it your Nike one? No, it was <laughs> I, know you had, I know you had two anime shirts. No, no, I had one anime shirt. I had Se- the shirt of Sega Saturn from Sega Hard Girls, and I had a yeah, purple shirt. as we were driving back and forth from the fucking museum, roll my windows down, the fucking Sega Hard Girls theme's playing. I almost forgot that. While we were driving, we listened to the Italian version of the He-Man opening from the 2002 cartoon, which is really sick. Like the fucking Dark Horse series, like, hey, hey Ted, you want to see something? All right, what? You want to, you want to hear the Italian He-Man opening? I <laughs> I guess. I don't know where you're going with this. Oh, shit. It's super good, ain't it? Because you feel like, oh, Italian, it's just gonna, like, is this just going to be hilariously bad? Is it just going to be really shit? No, they put so much work into it. Well, yeah, it's also the 2002 cartoon, not the fucking Filmation one. <laughs> it's the fucking cartoon, not the fucking, uh, the, the moving comic. I'll fucking set the outro music to the Italian He-Man opening. Why don't you just make it regular He-Man? <laughs> no, it has to be but the Italian do, one. Do the Spanish dub that we watched at, at my grandma's house. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah it was fun uh i don't know maybe some other time we'll do something like it again yeah oh yeah so yeah, but i want to talk about that, that car thing so we were listening to fo- my fucking phone in the oh. car so he fucking i i, I pull out I'm like ted i can play some sick ass anime girl music right now and he's like <laughs> you won't do it you don't have the guts i look at him i have Sega Hard Girls, right there. I said I bought that for two bucks on Amazon. <laughs> That's the full, high quality, full opening right you there. You don't have the coconuts. And I just, I look at him dead in the eyes and push play. Now, you should put that as the op- as the ending song, because that song, just the beginning two seconds, sets up for what song that was. So he blasted that through the radio. And he asked me if I had anything more embarrassing. And I said no, but I actually had one that I forgot that I had. A oh Vocaloid boy. song. Fucking. I <laughs> forgot I had the song on there. I would have blasted this too. I also had the. Ma. Fucking. Every. Def- Man Musumi. There we go. Monster Musumi f- opening sung by Rackner on there. I had Pappy's song and I had Sue's song on there too. But he See, didn't want to listen to that. These are all way worse than Sega Hard Girls. See, well, okay. See, like I said, Alex. Pappy's did, song Alex, is not cute. You so. did not have the coconuts. See, that, well, think, Tabs, think of cringe for you. And I know a high pitched anime girl singing is bad for you. Pappy's song is cute but it's not like it's not, it's not, it's not, it's, not, it's not the 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 anime cutesy that i want you to hear <laughs> the anime cutesy that the liberal media wants you to hear i need some fucking to- reptilians and the great pyramids of giza are just a goddamn generator for the lost city of atlantis alex and i've been over this but you won't fucking listen I also got to tell him about Ailstorm, the pirate-themed heavy metal band. It's Ailstorm, not Elstorm. I said Ailstorm. You said Elstorm. I'll fucking... I'll fuck you. <laughs> Bitch, I'm gonna make you come on these titties. <laughs> what? Is this Wait. related to that lemon horror thing? No, but I haven't shown you the Ant Fee or whatever parody either. I have so many videos I gotta show you at the end of this fucking podcast. We're just gonna fucking end this now. This podcast is over. And and that was our trip to Chicago. Have fun, everybody. See you in Street Fighter V, everybody. <laughs> oh, I forgot to talk about the fucking end of the concert. We were like, we were about to get up and leave because everyone was chanting, Miku, Miku, Miku. And she comes back and there's like an encore thing with this piano. It was super good and I liked it. Boom, edit that in the middle. There, covered it. Fuck you. (laughs) There, I didn't forget anything. Alex, I'm not going to edit that in the middle.